Hello. During the next few minutes, we're going to explore various aspects of temporomandibular joint, or TMJ, disorders. The purpose of this video is to help you understand a method of treatment that might be right for you. And because no procedure is without possible risk or complication, we'll inform you of the potential risks or complications associated with your treatment. Now, let's explore these areas in more detail. The temporal mandibular joint, or TMJ, is one of the most constantly used joints in the body, working during eating, talking, yawning, and other common activities. The TMJ is really two complex joints, working like a ball and socket, at the point where the lower jaw hinges against the bones on either side of the skull. Sometimes an injury to the joint can result in symptoms of TMJ disorders, but disorders more commonly arise from stress or habit-related activities such as teeth clenching or grinding. Early symptoms of TMJ disorders include minor painless clicking, which gradually becomes more pronounced over time. It is important to pay attention to these early warning signs, as prompt diagnosis can increase the likelihood of effective treatment. Proper temporal mandibular joint function depends on the harmonious working of the surrounding muscles, bite, and jaw bones. A problem in any one of these areas can result in TMJ disorders. When muscles surrounding the TMJ are tight, usually due to stress habits such as teeth clenching, pressure is placed on the TMJ, damaging the disc portion of the joint. Bite problems, such as overbites, can place the condyle or bowl portion of the joint in an unstable position. Impact injuries can cause the disc to slip out of position, creating discomfort during simple activities such as talking or chewing. When patients seek help for a possible TMJ disorder, we obtain a thorough medical history, including information on the individual's lifestyle, overall health, diet, and medication. We then conduct a physical examination to test for painful muscles, joint noises, and abnormal jaw movements. Pinpointing the source of the TMJ problem may require the patient to undergo one or more diagnostic x-rays, which provide detailed images of bone and soft tissue changes in discs and ligaments. The oral surgeon reviews all findings with the patient to develop a mutually acceptable treatment plan. And before treatment begins, the oral surgeon also explains what the patient may realistically expect from the treatment. After my TMJ disorder was diagnosed, I was relieved to learn that there was a lot I could do to alleviate the problem. Even though I can't control my hectic lifestyle, it's good to know that there are some things I can control. And I felt better just knowing that I could participate in my own treatment. Simple changes in habits, such as giving up hard foods or chewing gum, can enable the temporal mandibular joint to rest, often bringing relief. Other remedial therapy can include the use of ice packs, moist heat, gentle flexibility exercises, and over-the-counter medications. Now, when these methods do not adequately address the problem, additional treatment may be indicated. Such treatment may include a bite plate, called a splint or a night guard, to help prevent clenching or grinding and reduce muscle tension. Now, in some cases, orthodontics or restorative dental treatment can relieve joint pressure by improving harmony among the muscles, the joints, the discs, the ligaments, and the teeth. If, over a period of time, you have not obtained relief through these methods, surgical reconstruction of all or part of the joint may be a treatment option. Fortunately, only a small percentage of TMJ patients require surgical treatment. However, in cases where it is recommended, patients need to understand the basic components of the surgery so they can ask informed questions about the procedure. Arthroscopy is a form of surgery in which we make a small skin incision and insert a tiny tube called an arthroscope. And through this viewing device, the surgeon is able to see the interior of the joint and performs minor surgery, such as releasing scar adhesions and flushing out the joint. This technique is commonly used in knee surgery. Sometimes 
arthroscopy reveals the need for surgical reconstruction of the joint. We accomplish more complex reconstruction of the temporomandibular joint through a surgical procedure called arthroplasty. And during this surgery, we make an incision in front of the ear, expose the joint, and repair the disc or ligament. Extensive joint damage may require additional surgical procedures. These can include bone recontouring, replacement of the disc with grafted materials from another part of the body, or with artificial materials. In rare cases, we may need to artificially replace the entire joint. Now these other procedures we can do here in the office, but we always conduct this type of procedure under general anesthesia, and this means you will not be conscious during the surgery. There must be risks. Well, yes, there are, and I want to go over the risks with you in some detail. So please stop me whenever you have a question or need further clarification. Now, the risks of general anesthesia can include nausea, vomiting, nosebleed, tooth damage, hoarseness, prolonged recovery, and pneumonia. And as with any general anesthetic, it may be potentially fatal. Some side effects can be anticipated following the surgery. These can include bleeding, usually for only a few hours, swelling inside the mouth and on the side of the face, some discomfort, muscle stiffness in the jaw or the joint area, and temporary bruising of the face or the lips and beneath the sides of the jaw. So far, we've reviewed the diagnosis, treatment, and alternative treatment of this surgery. No surgical procedure is without risk, so we want to make sure that you're also informed about some of the complications. Your oral surgeon will explain these risks to you prior to surgery. You'll be asked to sign a written consent form to signify your understanding. If you have questions or need further explanation, always be sure to ask. First, there is the risk of infection. In any surgery, bacteria are always present and may cause infection. However, infections usually respond to antibiotic treatment. In cases of severe infections, prolonged treatment or hospitalization may be necessary. Are there any other complications? Depending on the difficulty of the surgery, there are a variety of risks. Now, these include a slightly noticeable skin incision line and possible damage to sensory or motor nerves in this area. The most significant risk comes from motor nerve injury, which may cause temporary or permanent facial muscle weakness, causing an inability to wrinkle the brow, raise an eyebrow, or tightly close your eyelid. Now, these changes are both cosmetic and functional, and while usually temporary, are very occasionally permanent and severe. Another possible risk of TMJ surgery is continuing discomfort in various areas of the face. Patients should be aware that surgical treatment will not necessarily result in total relief from all of these symptoms, and continued pain may be experienced. And regardless of the treatment, patients may not improve, and their condition may even become worse, especially if there is a return to stressful habit patterns. Our goal is to help patients understand their diagnosis, their treatment plan, and the risks of treatment. Patients are encouraged to, at all times, entertain realistic expectations about the effectiveness of treatment. Informing patients of the risks associated with dental surgery allows them to make decisions about their treatment and have realistic expectations about the results. Before we close, let's take a few moments to review some questions that many patients ask. True or false, painless clicks in one or both of the TMJs can be early symptoms of a disorder. This is true. Splint therapy is a treatment option for TMJ disorders. Is this true or false? Yes, splint therapy is an option for TMJ disorders. True or false? TMJ disorders can sometimes be corrected through stress management techniques. Yes, in some cases, this is true. Chewing hard foods or gum will not aggravate TMJ disorders. Is this true or false? This is false. Chewing hard foods will definitely aggravate TMJ disorders. Is the following statement true or false? 
a slightly noticeable skin incision line is a risk of TMJ surgery. This is true. Please consult with your oral surgeon if you'd like further explanation of any of the information in this video or if you have questions about topics that may not have been included. During the informed consent process, you'll be asked to read and sign a surgical consent form for the procedure just described. Your oral surgeon is committed to not only caring for your physical needs, but also to providing all the information you need to make an informed decision about your course of treatment.